When you think of modern civil war, Germany doesn't necessarily spring to mind. But since 2011, Syria has been torn apart by conflict and Germany, specifically Berlin, has been playing a big role in helping refugees. Although the conflict in Syria is far from over, a large Syrian population has come to settle in Germany. So I've come to Berlin to find out more about how these Syrians came to seek refuge here, how they got here and how people feel about it now. Since the conflict in Syria began over seven years ago, almost 13 million people have been displaced. Over 5 million people have moved to neighbouring countries such as Lebanon, Iraq and Egypt and more than half a million refugees fled to Germany, over 2,000 miles away on foot, where there have been mixed responses about their arrival. Although it hasn't all been plain sailing for Syrian people in Germany, they have managed to create a life for themselves, especially in Neukölln, one of Berlin's most international districts. And walking around, you can really see the cultural influences. Sonnen Ali is a five kilometre stretch of road in Berlin, which for a long time has been home to a large Middle Eastern and Turkish community. But now Syrian people are really making their presence felt too. It seems appropriate that this road was once intersected by the Berlin Wall, as it's now an example of people of different cultures, ethnicities and religions working and living together. I travelled across the city to Al Hamra, an authentic Arabic cafe in the heart of Berlin, to speak with two refugees. Ihab Sukaria, who was 20 and came to Berlin in 2015, and Mohammed Wanli, who arrived in 2014. Ihab told me his thoughts on living as a foreigner in Berlin. We appreciate what, what we are having. I totally appreciate it. Like, I feel happy, I feel the joy of being safe, of being able to, to be myself and to have all the things that I already have nowadays. But I'm not saying that everything is negative. But I can't say that everything is positive. I can't say that I'm perfectly happy. I met with Ludger Lamper, who is a theatre director and coordinator of a project in Berlin called Mir Aus Willkommen, meaning More Than Welcome, which is aimed at helping newcomers integrate into society and has helped support some of his Syrian friends. Some friends of mine are working now as volunteers in the Museum Topographie des Terrors. It's about the German terror, um, Nazi terror in the in the past. So they working there as uh, volunteers and they uh, do a, a guided tour from their point of view on, uh, on Germany and of, on this history and what it has to do together with, uh, with the situation in Syria right now. And that's interesting. It's fantastic if people are that open that they can to argue or to uh, think about the position of the others. And that's, I think, the most thing you can do if you can uh, think about uh, or think out of the position of another one. It seems quite relevant that people fleeing the conflict in Syria should find themselves in Germany and specifically Berlin. Germany has long been known for its own grief and conflict, but now, having overcome these issues, it's providing a safe environment for those seeking refuge. From the memorial of the murdered Jews of Europe, reminiscent of World War II, to the Berlin Wall, the long history of struggle is apparent in whichever direction you turn. In the 20th century alone, this city was ruled by Nazis, devastated by bombs, and was split in two by a wall that is still remnant today before finally coming back together in 1989. Now the wall is down, and in a sense Berlin has been reconnected. But is there now a new metaphorical wall that is manifesting itself, a cultural divide? Hundreds of thousands of Syrian refugees now call Germany home, but not everyone here is happy about it. Obviously, far-right political parties such as Alternative for Deutschland have been vocal about their disapproval since the beginning, but even members of Angela Merkel's own party, as well as members of the German public, aren't happy about it either. I spoke with German broadcast journalist and senior lecturer at the University of Lincoln, Dr Imke Henkel. She has worked in politics both in Germany and the UK and has been following political responses to the refugee crisis. The AfD, the um, Alter Alternative for Deutschland, so this um, German UKIP in a way, and a Eurosceptic and, and then also 
in hostile to immigrants that grew a lot in popularity who is very much strict anti-refugees and has all this kind now of, a kind of identity and again brings in the islam there actually recently said that again an islam is not a part of germany Angela Merkel herself and other members of the Christian Democratic Union have quite dramatically changed their stance on refugee acceptance into Germany. And it was actually extraordinary to watch that from, from the distance because that was a masterpiece of um, political adeptness. <laughs> because she kept saying um, her famous sentence, wir schaffen das, we manage, and we can do that. So this um, rhetorical can do some still was very much out there and she kept saying it and even after a year and she was constantly asked by the media, do you still say we can do that? And said, yeah, I still say. And why saying that? She completely changed the policy. The arrival and integration of refugees continues to be a controversial issue for all Western countries, not just Germany. Headlines like these have become commonplace in the media over the last few years. A refugee crisis for the world. Life or death. Tiny victim of a human catastrophe. Headlines that reiterate the crisis that is taking place. Aggressive headlines such as this, although true, mean that it can be difficult for refugees to be accepted and not feared. <laughs> Mohammed is an atheist, but he explained to me that there is a stigma that all Syrians are Muslims and all Muslims are terrorists, but this image is a government construct aimed at breaking down the revolution in Syria. He said that Syrians are lawyers and doctors, artists, dancers, Muslim, Jewish, Christian, and have just as diverse a population as any other country. People in religious clothing are not terrorists. A terrorist is any person that chooses terror. Mohammed said that he is against religion in general, but he is also against the unfair treatment of Islam. Ehab has noticed how Berlin's level of acceptance seems to have changed over time. That wasn't like this. It wasn't like this at the beginning. I mean, in 2013, my friends were coming to Germany or to Europe in general, and they were like very welcomed. But after we uh, start to be a lot, he, like a big amount of people coming to Europe, then they started to feel like, okay, we didn't want this. It wasn't our aim, which is totally understandable in my opinion. People are afraid of having us more between them, you know, because not all of the European people are able to integrate as we have to integrate, like people wanted to stay the way they want, or the way they are, or the way they used to be. Integration is an issue for countries the world over, not just in Europe. Some people may think that migrants pose a threat to culture, jobs and access to state services, and perhaps find it difficult to see things from another perspective. But speaking with Ludger, it's clear that there are far less accepting countries than Germany to find yourself in. Of course, there are too much of the people who do not accept or do not want the newcomers. And what what it, the German state right now does is that they, the people get language courses, they get uh, integration courses, they get to know about the community, uh, society, and there is already a lot of changing in the mind of the people and the mind of the politics. Uh, but uh, and I would say. In general, Germany is still kind of open-minded, or as a as a federal state, and also from the from the lot of people. في دمشق تجده في جميع أراضي الياسمين. The storytelling arena Berlin is a multilingual stage which covers themes and issues which affect everyone that participates, including the conflict in Syria. Founded by Rachel Clark in 2015, the Storytelling Arena provides a safe haven for discussion and gives refugees the opportunity to tell people about their past in their own words. In 2016, the Syrian series began. 
Syrian people living in Berlin, alongside performers from other countries, tell stories and speak about their experiences in Germany and about the revolution and the situation in Syria. I spoke with Rachel, who is a storyteller herself, about how the Syrian series came about and how it is bringing people from different backgrounds together in Berlin. Um, at the beginning, uh, the idea was to get to know our new neighbours because um, we had the special situation in Berlin and in Germany that so many people arrived uh, from Syria at the same time and everybody was curious. I mean, Berlin is an international city anyway and people here really wanted to know who are our new neighbours and were excited because a lot of people here have travelled. They were excited to know, my goodness, what is... What was Syria like um, before the war and who are these people, what makes them tick, what's their identity, um, just a kind of fascination and the idea of offering a stage was to get everybody in contact with one another and um, yeah, to learn more about Syria and also to give a space. I mean, I'd been teaching uh, Syrian students German at the time and um, they were really, really keen to get in contact with more people in Berlin, more Germans. And I thought, well, I have this stage. It seems like a perfect idea. They've been fascinating me in, in my classes with, uh, with their stories. So why not give them that space and, uh, and a stage in Berlin to do it? Rachel explained to me how some Syrians are integrated to the extent that they are facing the same problems as Berliners. A housing shortage and finding employment are shared issues, but at the same time an underlying prejudice towards refugees seems to remain. Their qualifications don't seem to make any sense here, even if they're highly skilled it's not recognised, so suddenly they've, they've lost a whole future. Their future has become their past and their present is somehow disorientated. So they're in this state of limbo and of course knowing that the country that, that you loved uh, has been destroyed doesn't make that any easier to start again, to, to set up a new future for yourself, knowing how your people are suffering and knowing that your, everything that you had planned has, has gone and crumbled uh, behind you. The situation for Syrian people in Germany is far from perfect. Settling into a country that knows nothing of your home or culture is no easy task and there is certainly still a long way to go in terms of acceptance and equality, even though programmes such as Mir aus Willkommen and the Storytelling Arena Berlin are paving the way. But the reality for Mohammed and Ehab is that if they hadn't left Syria, they probably wouldn't be alive today. Ehab would have had to enrol in the armed forces, fighting in a brutal civil war which started as a peaceful protest against the dictatorship of Assad. Mohammed would have been killed for his participation in the revolution, against a regime that he described as a mother who kills her own children. Given the choice, both Ehab and Mohammed would return to Syria, to friends and family and a life left behind. But for the time being, there's just no possible route home. شكراً <تصفيق>